Last year I pinned my flag to the mast and came out strongly in favour of a preservation team going by the name of Exodus. While a large chunk of what they distributed was copyrighted material, an even larger percentage of the games were in a legally grey area, with the vast majority of them never likely to see commercial release, or any release for that matter again, outside of the collection. The Exodos team and their efforts are solely responsible for the existence of a random DOS game show, my flagship programme, and they do a better job than any company or storefront at preserving that golden era of gaming. I made a cheeky remark in the video about Linux support, and while I doubt it's the reason for this release, it's good to see that out of millions of Linux users, someone felt the same way I did. In the team's own words, the Linux patch converts the launchers and install scripts of the 7200 Exodos to be playable in Linux without a front end. Previously this had been sort of possible thanks to Volyega's Exodos Converter, which I used in the past but never got round to doing a video on. I should probably do that. The biggest difference, aside from being officially sanctioned and or made by the same people who did the scripts in the first place, is that there's an optional front end included as well. Unlike the script conversion, this is not officially endorsed by the team, but created by one of their Discord members, Marias Gorski. The Exodos launcher is forked from the Flashpoint project launcher, an impressive front end for a web-based Flash gaming preservation group. A link to that is in the description. No one man is an island though, and should you have the technical skills to help develop the front end fervor, then head on over to the Exodos Discord server and look for him in the Linux Port for Nerds channel. Yes, they really did name it that. Anyway, on to the installation. The website has brief instructions for those more familiar with Linux, but the zip file comes with handy step-by-step -step instructions for beginners or people who are good at breaking things like me. For those who like visual instructions with narration, here's the rest. Skip to the timestamp to avoid all that and hear my first impressions post-install. First, the Exodos 5 Linux patch zip file must be extracted to the correct location, which is the root directory of your Exodos 5 collection. This is where the catalog, PDF and setup file are located. Extract the contents here via terminal command or GUI. There should be three new folders and four new files added to the root directory. If you don't know how to extract a zip file properly, then installing this might be a bit advanced for you. Installing the collection requires two more steps, and you have a choice between using the XOGUI or the terminal for this. If you use the GUI, it's stressed that you need to close and restart it after installation has been completed. We'll keep things nice and simple and use the GUI for this by running start XOGUI. If for some reason this doesn't work, there's a troubleshooting section in the text file and you're encouraged to reach out to the team in order to find a fix via Discord. Now that we have our nice GUI up and running, we go to the Home tab and install dependencies. This will run a guided setup via a script run in the terminal to install the needed software onto your machine. In future, with distribution updates, the update option in the menu will allow you to maintain compatibility, but as of now, it doesn't connect with the server, because it's still early days. When running the setup, you'll be given an option to choose between flat packs and native DOSBox packages. There are some advantages and disadvantages to each, according to the team. Flat packs have an advantage over native DOSBox packages in that they're more portable. If you're using an unsupported distribution, they'll make it much easier to get the collection working. However, the team's testers have shown that some computers have distorted fluid synth output in ECE when using flat packs. Native packages do not have this issue, but must be regularly maintained and updated as newer distributions come out. Upgrading your version of Linux may break a previously installed native package. This is why I was talking about that update option before. When I attempted to install native packages, it told me that I was using an operating system that was too modern, and proceeded to fail setting up the dependencies. I think this is because it's searching for a specific version, and if you have a more modern version of that, it all goes pear-shaped. I don't think it should be like this, but the setup did warn us that this could happen. So instead I went with flat packs, which were a success, but took a hefty chunk of disk space to install. 
Once you've made your choices and installed your dependencies, the final step is to select Exodos Setup on the Home tab. This unpacks the required Exodos files, including the Launchbox assets and the game frontend assets configs to run the collection. In addition, it'll extract the Linux game launcher and setup files. It'll make the collection work on both Windows and Linux computers, and ensure updates work correctly for both operating systems. Don't try to be clever by extracting these files manually. They're location sensitive, and you don't know where they go. Let the automated scripts do their work. Lastly, there's the option to remove adult games from the XOGUI menu. This removes games with over 18 material from the Launchbox XML file. You can also set your global defaults to be full screen or windowed, and whether or not you would like to have default aspect ratio on or off. Feel free to consult my video on the importance of aspect ratio if you don't know what that means. Once it's complete, restart the GUI and things should be up and running. If for not, go and speak to the good folk on Discord, as I keep stressing. The more people willing to help improve the Linux version with feedback and suggestions, the better. Though as always, be respectful of the developer's time. They're doing a favour to you for nothing, so treat them well. The README stresses that you should not run the main Windows setup.bat file after installing the Linux patch. This makes sense as it'll undo the changes necessary for Linux compatibility. Also worth noting is that running the setup script on an Exodos instance that was previously installed in Windows will clear the Windows installed games playlist in Launchbox due to Launchbox being reinstalled. I also noticed that my deleted games that I had played, but wasn't interested in via Launchbox, had been repopulated on the list, so that's something to be aware of. The games have been configured to run in special bundled versions of DOSBox, and games which are supported by ScumVM will give you the option at launch as to which emulator you'd like to use. There's also Frauds, but that's only for a handful of Z-Machine games, mostly Infocomp text adventures. Some of the titles running on custom builds of DOSBox that don't have a Linux equivalent will launch via Wine, which is emulation within a compatibility layer. I'm running Linux Mint with a Cinnamon desktop, but many of the other distributions are supported, including Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions, and Arch or Manjaro Linux. Chances are if your distro is based upon those, this will work. It's all about the dependencies though, and your mileage may vary. But enough with the chatter, let's have a look at the interface. First things first, I checked the log of the Exodos GUI and it said that the themes folder wasn't loaded correctly, so your interface may well look different and better than mine. My biggest gripe with it other than its seeming inability to delete games you don't like is the lack of option to locate the dosbox.conf file. This means I have to manually search for the file in the Exodos folder each time I want to set the full screen resolution, or bump up the cycles count or change the output. All 7200 or so comp files are located in the DOS folder with an exclamation mark in front of it, buried three folders deep under exodos slash exo. Why would I tinker with those? Well, Warcraft 2 installed and ran, but when it came to actually playing, the graphics were a bit blurry due to improper scaling and there was slowdown which I thought at the time was caused by the cycles count having been set to only 20,000. Fortunately, Linux users generally don't mind the odd bit of tinkering, and if you uninstall and reinstall the game, those changes you've made remain persistent. Before doing that, I tested out my external QSynth to see if a MIDI version of a soundtrack would be sent through a sound font. I thought I had success, but it turns out that the DOSBox version used to run Warcraft 2 had built-in sound font rendering via QSynth support, and no distortion either despite my using a Flatpak version of ECE. I was able to cause this eventually by hitting record on a windowed version of the Pixel Perfect version of the game that sadly didn't scale to full screen. The distortion ended up happening several times in the end, but uninstalling and reinstalling the game using the GUI tended to fix it. Why did I try Pixel Perfect? Well, after tinkering again, I tried my modified version of the game, and it didn't change a thing, which suggests that the scaling my GPU was doing was the issue, as the Pixel Perfect version ran just fine. Okay, so I actually found the solution to this scaling problem that I was having. Uh, if you go into the game directory, 
It's under Exodos, Exo, Exodos, and then the DOS with the exclamation mark in front of it. Then you'll find your game directory. In there, next to the DOSBox.conf file, is a DOSBox underscore Linux.conf file. That's the one you need to edit. Because editing the Windows version does nothing. Problem solved. Moving on, it was time to test out the Scum VM integration and Munt output. And what better way to do it than having a chat with our good old pal Biff the Bouncer. The default setup didn't give us a full screen window, and when I went to play it again it errored out on me, magically vanishing. The key was to set up Scum VM the way I wanted despite the disappearance, and then reload. The settings became persistent and I got full screen indie with Munt playing the soundtrack. And because it's Scum VM, no external programs were needed. Biff was not happy to see me. Oh well. Next, I wanted to try MT32 output with a DOSBox game. I remember back when I did that. Installing the GUI version of Munt wasn't as easy as it was with QSynth, and having it detect DOSBox can be a problem. I guess you could say it was no pushover. Except that with the ECE version that Pushover ran on, Munt support didn't require any external program. Everything was just configured the way it should be. The beautiful theme of Pushover in its first easy level worked just fine. I ran a few other games to test things out and everything went fine. Though I've heard that there are some issues with script conversion with regards to case sensitivity and punctuation that's being worked on. For a project that's only a year old and is essentially the work of two people converting everything the other members of the team do to Linux for a mere 1% of the user base, this is a really impressive start. Between this project, the Exodos GUI, and the separate Exodos Converter project, having thousands of DOS games to play at the touch of a button on Linux is quickly growing from a distant hope into a fully fledged reality. If you want to help the team out or just test things out yourself, links to the website and the Discord server are in the description. And if you've made it all the way through to the end of this video, you might want to check out some of my other stuff. I do various scripted weekly videos and I've got hundreds of videos of retro stuff on the channel. Feel free to take a look. And if you like what you see, you can subscribe, but it's not mandatory. Until next time.